If someone comes and tells you that love is in the air, show them this image and say, forget air, love is in the universe. This cosmic structure is known as the Heart Nebula. It is one of the most beautiful things in the universe, and it shows that nature is much more of an artist, than a scientist or an engineer. But what it really is? How did this thing form, why is it colored red and what's happening in this region of the universe? Too many questions, but don't worry I will answer all of them. Before we start, make sure you subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos on the cosmos. Also check out our space-themed merchandise given below. First, let us talk about some numbers. How big this thing is? The Heart Nebula has a diameter of 330 light years, where one light year is 6 trillion miles. To put that into perspective, if you are traveling in the fastest spacecraft that can go at 42 miles per second, it will take 1.3 million years to travel across this nebula. Also, the Heart Nebula lies 7,200 light years away. So even light takes 7,200 years from the nebula to reach us. This means, the image of the nebula that we see today is how it looked 7,200 years ago. The Heart Nebula was discovered more than 200 years ago, in 1787 by astronomer William Herschel. He was one of the most influential astronomers in the history of humankind. In 1774, he constructed his own big telescope, and started taking observations of the objects in the night sky. He was the one who discovered the seventh planet of the solar system, Uranus. On the night of November 3, 1787, Herschel pointed his telescope towards the constellation of Cassiopeia. It's a W-shaped constellation through which a rich section of the Milky Way runs. After making several observations, he came across a fuzzy patch in the sky. He indexed the nebula in his catalog that contained over 5,000 astronomical objects. Since the resolving power of Herschel's telescope was small, he could not make much out of it. In the next couple of centuries, as astrophotography improved, scientists studied the nebula in detail and captured better pictures of this cosmic structure. While the nebula's official designation is IC 1805, it became popular in the scientific community by the name of Heart Nebula because its shape resembles the human heart, as depicted in popular media. This was all about the discovery and some numbers concerning the nebula. Now let us have a look at what's happening in this region of the cosmos. In astronomy, a nebula is an interstellar region of dust and gas, primarily composed of the first two elements of the periodic table, hydrogen and helium. Depending on the location of the nebula, there might be trace amounts of other chemical elements. There are different kinds of nebulae in the universe, but they are broadly connected with the birth of stars or the aftermath of a dying star. When a sun-like star reaches its deathbed, it expels its cool outer layers. This is known as a planetary nebula. The name, however, is a misnomer. It has nothing to do with the planets. When a dying star undergoes a titanic explosion, what is left behind is a supernova remnant. Hence, these two types of nebulae are related to a star's death. But most of the nebulae in our galaxy are the cradles of stars. They are stellar nurseries rich in hydrogen and helium, the two main ingredients of star formation. Some of these star-forming nebulae glow or reflect light, while the others appear as dark patches in the sky obscuring the background light. The Heart Nebula is an emission nebula where new stars are taking birth. You may be wondering why the nebula is red in color. The answer to this question lies in the hydrogen atom, but before that, let me introduce one small concept related to the stars. According to a recent estimate made by the European Space Agency, there are over 1 trillion trillion stars in the universe. Astrophysicists broadly classify the stars into seven main categories, according to their surface temperature. The O and the B type stars are the hottest, with surface temperatures reaching up to 40,000 kelvins. They are followed by the A, F, G, K, and M-type stars with decreasing surface temperatures. 
At about 6000 Kelvin, our sun is a G-type star. Notice how the apparent color of the stars changes, as we go from the O-type to the M-type. With this changing color, the type of radiation that is being emitted by these stars also changes. The young O and the B-type stars emit copious amounts of ultraviolet radiation. These high-energy UV photons emitted by the OB stars ionize the neutral hydrogen atoms present in the nebula. Ionization means that the hydrogen nucleus and the electron orbiting it become separated. They reassemble but this time in an excited state. The captured electrons cascade down through the quantum states of the hydrogen atom emitting radiation or a spectral line. One of the most significant jump of the electron is from the the third to the second energy level, or the first line of the Barma series. This jump creates a spectral line having a wavelength of 656.28 nanometers. This spectral line is known as the H-alpha line, and is one of the most important spectral lines used by astronomers. If you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, this wavelength lies in the red end, this is why most of the emission nebulae are red in color. Back on Earth, it is not necessary that the detected wavelength is exactly 656.28 nanometers. It might be reshifted or blue shifted, depending on the relative motion of the nebula. From the calculated reshift, we can also determine how fast it is moving away from us. As far as the Hart Nebula is concerned, its glow comes from an open cluster of young supermassive stars called Malot 15. Lying near the center of the nebula, the stars in this cluster are supermassive O and B-type stars, some of them 50 times bigger than the Sun. On cosmic time intervals, they are young and formed about half a million years ago. Observations show there also used to be a radio-emitting microquasar in the region, which was expelled millions of years ago. The Hart Nebula has an interesting neighborhood. Just to the left of the nebula, lies another cloud of gas called the Sol Nebula. The Hart and the Sol Nebula are home of seven clusters of young stars. In this image, you can see there are two background galaxies. These galaxies are difficult to spot in the optical image, but become visible in infrared observations. One of them is an elliptical galaxy, and the other is a lenticular galaxy. The famous Andromeda Galaxy also lies in the neighborhood of the Hart Nebula. This was all about this beautiful nebula. Spread the cosmic love by sharing this video with your loved ones. If you want to learn astrophysics at home, we have a 30-article series designed for beginners absolutely free of cost. The link to the series is given in the description below. See you in the next video.